from Matthew chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all these bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Did you hear the story about the old fella was in his house and the rains began to pour down and the police came by and said, there's a flood coming, you should get out now, we can take you. And he said, no, thank you very much. God will take care of me. Well, the rain continued and the floodwaters began to pour into his house and fill up his first floor. So he moved to the second floor and they kept coming. So he went up to the attic. He's on his roof praying to God to deliver him just then. An emergency boat from the fire department comes by and says, get in, we can take you now. And he says, no, I'm praying for God to deliver me. And the boat goes on. The rains continue. The floodwaters are shaking the foundations of his house. It's just about to go over when a Coast Guard helicopter comes by with a basket he can get in. They try to save him then. He says, no, my God will deliver me. And then the waters washed his house away and swept him under the waters to his death. When he saw God in the afterlife, he said with somewhat of an accusatory tone, I thought I could count on you to deliver me. And God said, well, I tried. I sent the police, the fire department, and the Coast Guard. Wise or foolish? That's the question our text raises today. Which group are you in, the wise group or the foolish group? Jesus says, pay attention. Keep awake. God is at work. Our passage today says the wise are the ones who prepare for the long haul. The foolish live only in the moment it's key to remember that this is teaching offered to the disciples privately in preparation for the crucifixion which jesus is expecting he's already said to his disciples three times we're on our way to jerusalem the messiah must suffer and be killed and then be raised three days later Later in this same story, Jesus is going to beg the disciples to stay awake and pray with him, and they fall asleep. Jesus says, keep awake. Keep awake. In the text today, in this parable, Jesus uses the setting of a wedding from the first century. The way this typically worked is the bride was at her house or probably her father's house actually she would not be living alone the bridesmaids come and join her at her house and then they wait for the bridegroom to come and invite them to his house or to his father's house where the wedding's going to take place so he comes calls them out and there's a great procession back to his house before the wedding comes that's the setting or the context that Jesus is using and telling this story. He tells us there's ten bridesmaids, five were prepared with extra oil, five were not. Some are wise, Jesus says, and 
some are foolish. He's asking the disciples, and I think you and me, to think about where we are. Are we prepared for the long haul? Are we ready to live our faith out every day? The parable says that the wise ones were prepared with oil, so they had fuel for the journey. They had light for the path. It was midnight. It was dark. But those five were ready with their lamps. Now the others asked for help. The wise ones do not share their oil. So this is not a great parable about sharing or generosity. Yet it is a parable about the necessity of living every day with faith and hope until Jesus comes. The point here does not seem to be to scare people, but to encourage people who are living through difficult times. Jesus knows the crucifixion is coming. He's told his disciples, be prepared. This is what's coming. Hard times are coming. Bad things are going to happen in Jerusalem. They seem not to comprehend all of that. Our Bible scholars tell us when Matthew was writing this, it was decades after Jesus was crucified, probably after the year 70 when the Romans finally invaded Jerusalem and basically burned the city to the ground, scattered the Jews and the Christians out of the city. So this would have been a timely and relevant message decades later after Jesus shared it to be awake and be prepared but just as so much of the Bible is, it's timeless. It's still timely and relevant for us today because we too need encouragement as we live through the worst pandemic in our lifetimes. Then pile on top of that social unrest and racial strife and economic uncertainty and politics that tread on fear and attack and undermine our democratic institutions. And then for those of us who are United Methodist, we're living through a denominational realignment where some want to leave the denomination and others want to stay, and that's yet to be worked out because of the pandemic. The general meeting that could decide these things and move us into the future has had to be postponed, is likely to be postponed again because of the pandemic, there's no safe way to have a large global meeting to make these decisions. I was at a gathering of pastors from the largest United Methodist Church just a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about the future of the United Methodist Church. Some statistics were shared about what our people are going through. They shared some stats from one particular research project that had asked people how they were dealing with their stress and anxiety 50 percent of the respondents said they were overwhelmed by the stress and the anxiety and the malaise that they are feeling right now but then even more startling they showed us what young adults had said 90 percent of them said they're feeling overwhelmed Emotionally, so many of us are feeling raw and overstretched and overwhelmed. People are struggling to cope. This parable brings the good news where Jesus says the bridegroom is coming. Or if I may paraphrase, better days are coming. Or to use the language Jesus uses, the kingdom of heaven is coming or God's will be done. You may be going through hardship and pain now, but Jesus says better days are coming. We find this strand of wisdom woven throughout the fabric of the gospel, hope in the midst of adversity, hope when you're feeling down, hope when you're struggling, hope when you're facing difficult days because God is with us and God is coming evermore. If we look at our Holy Communion litany, we see how we rehearse this idea of facing our difficulties and our pain and yet hanging on to hope because we know that God is with us. We open this service by singing, Rejoice, the Lord is King. It said, Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice. 
because the Savior reigns and your Lord is King. And then we reminded ourselves in our greeting to set our hope in the Lord, not on ourselves, but on what God can do in our lives. And then when we get to the rest of the litany, we'll move into Thanksgiving during our communion. But before we do that, we have a confession and you receive a pardon. I want to read you the confession and pardon. I will say, most merciful God, who out of your love has made us and through your love kept us and in your love can make us fully loving in word and deed, then together we will pray. We humbly confess that we've not loved you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we've not loved one another as Christ loved us but then we say your life lives within our souls yet our selfishness and self-doubt have hindered your work in us we have not lived constantly by faith we have forgotten your spirit we've neglected your promptings and teachings forgive us when we go astray help us to amend our ways and in your spirit direct what we shall be that you may come into the full glory of thy creation in us and in all the people through Christ our Lord. You see how we acknowledge our stumbling, our failures, our pain, and yet we hang on to hope that God is at work in us and around us. And then we announce the good news that God loves us. And in that love that's revealed in Christ, we are forgiven. We say it twice so we might remember it. And then once we know that, we move into the great thanksgiving where we offer thanks and praise to God together before we move to the prayer of consecration where we remember the promises of Christ. And we remember what God has done for us through Jesus Christ as we remember the bread as a symbol of Christ's broken body given for each of us his blood poured out it's a symbol of the new covenant of God's love enveloping us and leading us into the world and of course then at the end we pray we sing just before we receive communion Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again. It is hope in the face of adversity. It is hope in the midst of adversity and difficulty. It's the good news of God's love being alive in our lives. It is a belief that better days are coming. We pray that God's Holy Spirit will be with us and make us one as we go to proclaim Christ's love to the world. May God be with you.